what's up guys, it's LegoHobo910 here with another LEGO video, and in this video I'm reviewing set number 760079, Ravager Attack. And before we get into the review, I want to point something out that really bugged me. This box. They make it look like Mantis has telekinesis or something. Like, whoa, blue glowy, oh, he has blue glowy around him. Same here, blue glowy, blue glowy, oh my gosh, telekinesis. It's like she does not have telekinesis. She can feel your emotions if she touches you. She has no, she does not have telekinesis. And they make her look like some super epic battle character. She was, like, intentionally meant to be lame. So it feels like they are lying to me. Congratulations, Lego. Watch the movie before you make box art. Now let's get into the review. So, starting with what seems kind of like a lazy side build. First of all, I don't like the concept of this build. What I wish they would have done is, they showed this in the trailer, so it's not really a spoiler, that trap that rocket has where it launches them all into the sky. This might be what that's simulated to be because he shoots a bunch of darts at the Ravagers, but then that launches them in the sky. And this is a stud shooter, so maybe this could simulate all those darts flying. But I wish they had, like, some feature where it would be some little lever thing where you push down on it, and it shoots up the platform. Like, it doesn't launch the platform. Like, the platform's attached. So you push down on this thing, and the platform jumps up, so that way anybody attached to it will go flying into the air. I think that would be perfect, and that would work really well. Except they gave us this kind of lazy side build. This side, it's part of the Crash Milano. The sticker there looks pretty cool. And then this fairly lazy-looking tree. It's really square and doesn't look tree-ish. And then the six stud shooter, which once again might be simulating that trap or some other of Rocket's traps. But I don't remember a big minigun trap that he had. Do any of you, if you remember that, go ahead and tell me I may be wrong. But I'm pretty sure he didn't have that. And once again, maybe it's to simulate all the darts flying through the air to launch them into the air. But I feel like this doesn't simulate that. This just simulates, oh, big laser gun, let's shoot everybody, which isn't what it is. And that's just attached on that little hinge there, so that can be positioned around. And this is on a ball joint. So the side build, it feels pretty lazy. Plus, in the context of the scene this is based on, it doesn't really make much sense. Now, this build is cool. In the context of the scene, it doesn't make sense. Because they weren't flying around in these ships dogfighting. They more so landed in these ships. I think it was in these ships that they landed. I know I did see one of these ships in the movie, though. But I don't think they might have landed in these ships. Might not have. But this makes more sense. Because it is a Ravager ship. And it could be something that you can imagine to get them there. Or they could dogfight with it. It's not really in context of the scene. Except it makes more sense than this, which feels lazy, plus it's cool, and it's not this lazy build. It looks like a scaled-down version of the Milano, and I like that because Milano used to be a Ravager ship, so this is basically them scaling it down because they're like, we can't, we need a smaller set, we can't build a whole Milano in it in a different color scheme, so we're going to give you this, and I'm fine with this, this looks awesome. The sad thing is these stud shooters, I feel like they ruin the flow. They're just, they feel like they're just slapped on there. The sticker there is pretty good. I like the nose. These stud shooters I'm fine with, though, because they blend in fairly well. And then the cockpit here, it's this weird little kind of dishy dome thing. And sadly, it's kind of hard to sit a minifig in here if you want them reclining at all. When it closes, you can see it scooches the head forward, so the minifig looks kind of awkward sitting in there. And if we take them out... You can see that they're sitting on just studs, and then they have that little control panel piece. And then, moving around to the wings here, there are these fairly big wings. I wish they were slightly bigger, maybe had some of those fins that the Milano has, you know, like, just a few ball joints with little fins. They managed to do it on the uh, miniature Milano, so, I mean, they sure can do it on here. I feel like they should have put that on. Sure, it would have bumped up the piece count a bit, but not a bunch. I mean, they could have gotten rid of some of this to help with that and then it also has these pretty cool discs a little ravager logo and on the bottom it has these uh axle pieces with the engines on the front and back here which i think is a pretty cool design 
little thrusters, and then here it has a clip for this kind of shotgun-looking weapon, which they've used in Star Wars, they've used in the Lego Batman movie. It's just a uh, pistol here, a laser pistol with binoculars. And overall, I think that build's really cool-looking, but uh, it is a little small. That's my only criticism, and maybe add some fins. But other than that, I think it's pretty cool. And I like the fact that they scale it down on like this lazy build. Our first minifig is Taser Face. And to be honest, this is like kind of one of the main reasons I got this set because I need Taser Face. I need him. So we have Taser Face here. And at first, I was going to get this out of the way. Big brick built bazooka gun, which looks cool. Kind of salty about the stud shooter. But if you take this nut out, it doesn't look too bad. Normally complain about those. So if it's not too bad, it integrates fairly well in. Like, the patterning here looks really cool. Like, the scope, which can be turned. Turns the whole butt of the gun, though, as well. So, I mean. But that's symmetrical, so you don't really notice. And now we have Taser Face. He has his purple face here. Big black beard like that hair piece here. It's kind of just this weird floopity doop. That's the best way I can think of describing it. He has dark nougat hands here, and his pants have a bunch of buckles and stuff. Can't really see any of that printing, so with a little shot of YouTube magic, taken to the barber shop, Taser Face. So now you can see his printing, which has that little patch there, a bit of fur there, the Ravager logo under some of those patches. That's a fairly generic Ravager, Ravager torso, and the gloves there make it so they don't need to have a specific skin tone, so if you want aliens with the aliens or humans with different skin tones it will work unlike yondu's torso so i like that it works fairly well if you want to make a ravager army or if you want you can replace the hands if you're trying to make specific ravagers the back printing the fur carries over there's a bunch of uh straps and all sorts of stuff it, i really like him and now you can see his face printing fairly well the face printing it it's very ghoulish it looks cool and then he also has a bit of the facial hair printed on there but he has the big beard there, so, I mean, you really aren't ever going to see that. The darn camera will just focus. You really aren't ever going to see that uh, printed on facial hair because you have this beard piece. But then the eyes look pretty ghoulish. I like the texturing they did there. It fairly replicates Taser Face, who I thought would be a fairly hard minifig to rep replicate because of all those weird skin flaps and everything he had. Now we have Mantis, who does not have telekinesis, Lego, if you're watching, learn your facts. So, this is Mantis, and she replicates Mantis fairly well. This hairpiece is really cool, with a little Mantis antenna there, which don't really match up to the skin tone perfectly, they're a bit pale. But, I mean, it's not too bad, and I think it's the best they could have done. She has, on this side, just kind of a normal smile. On that side, she looks really angry. I don't understand why they put her wearing gloves. Because for the majority of the movie, she's not wearing gloves. Once again, Lego, why? Why? feel like you really don't know Mantis or her powers. She has this dark green printed torso, and it's kind of hard to see lots of the printing. It's just various shades of other greens and dark blues. Creates kind of that weird clothy thing. Like those weird clothes she has with those lines, the inner bit. Uh, lighter green. I like the shading they did there between the two kind of separate bits of cloth. The back, it's fairly similar. Yeah, overall, I think she's a cool minifig, and she represents the character well, but the character didn't have that much detail, and so they didn't put much on, and I'm fine with that. Don't understand the gloves, though. I wish they would have given her, like, a little skirt piece because she has a skirt. Well, it's, it's kind of a continuation of the shirt piece, but I wish they would have given her a skirt. So, now we have Trash Panther, I mean Rocket Raccoon, and he is different from the Rocket Raccoon we got in the, uh, what's the one, the Guardians of the Galaxy first wave. He has these two brick-built blasters, they both have the just laser pistol as the base, this one just has a stud attached to the end. This one has a lightsaber hilt and a clip with a neck bracket piece, that creates a pretty cool scope, which Rocket can flip through. And... His detailing on the front, there's quite a lot of it, but it's fairly simple detailing, and some of it's kind of hard to see because it's some very similar colors on the dark blue, like lots of the lighter blue, the brown blends in a bit, some of the silver blends in. It shows up a lot better on camera than it does in real life. You have to look really closly. There's also a bit of uh, gray up in there. 
And then he has those little shoulder pauldrons, which are part of his headpiece, which is kind of hard to get off sometimes. I just managed to do it. He also has the dark blue short legs. So he's that headpiece with the uh, pauldrons. And fairly well printed. has a nice little smirk. Like that. And on the back, he has the tailpiece, which, if we pop that off, you can see the back printing, which, once again, it's fairly simple, but detailed, like simple detailing. I feel like that's kind of a hard concept to explain. Silver and brown and gray. And fun fact, this torso is actually molded in brown and all that dark blue, which you would think is the major color, is actually painted on. Fun facts. You would think they would have printed in dark blue because it's mostly dark blue, except now for some reason they feel like going the weird indirect route. I like the minifigs. I like the ship. Do not like the side build. Feels lazy. And also I feel like Mantis doesn't really make sense in this scene. I feel the only minifigs that would make sense are Rocket and Baby Groot, Taserface, Yondu and other bad guys. I feel like it would have been good if they added like maybe one more Ravager. I'm fine with them putting Mantis in this set though because she really wouldn't make sense in any of the other sets except maybe Aisha's Revenge. Revenge, because the sets that she was in really don't. Uh, they, there's really no sets for her to be in. I feel like they were just like, oh no, we need to put Mantis somewhere. We made a mini fig for her and she's one of the main characters in the movie. Well, kind of main character. She's she's important, I guess. We need to put her in a set. Oh no, all the other sets have their minifig slots full. This one needs one more minifig. Let's put her in here. Yeah! So I feel it was kind of lazy to put her in here. And I feel like the tree build was lazy. This stuff is great. Mantis is great, but she doesn't really fit in the set. This build is lazy, but otherwise I feel like it's a great set. Especially on this side of stuff, including Mantis. Uh, but yeah, I think the minifigs are great. Half of it's great, the other half isn't really great, and one of the minifigs doesn't fit. Overall, pretty cool. Peace.